Greetings everyone, my name is Dr. Jason Freeman. I'd like to welcome you all to my channel. So today I'm at the Alamo Draft House in Washington, D.C. and I'm about to watch the film, The Clone Tyrone, starring Jamie Foxx, Tayona Paris, and John Boyega. I'm gonna tell you what I like about the film. I'm gonna tell you what I don't like about the film. Then I'm gonna tell you why I think you should see the film or just skip it. So this is a lot better than what they had when I first got in. <laughs> Late grade, Tina Turner. All right, so I just saw the film, They Clone Tyrone, and I have thoughts. So I'll start with what I liked about the film. I like the characters of Yo-Yo, Slick, and Tyrone Fontaine, played by Tiona Paris, Jamie Foxx, and John Boyega, respectively. They were very likable. They were noble in their own way, even though one's a drug dealer, one's a pimp. And it seemed like the actors are having fun with the material. You can even see one part where Tiona Paris, even in the trailer, um, Jamie Foxx starts to, to sing uh, I'm Going Down and Tiona Paris breaks. You can kind of see she breaks in the scene. She starts laughing. And I'm a firm believer if you want the audience to go on the journey with the characters, you have to make them, if, if not likable, at least interesting or, 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 you know, make it so that the people want to go with them. And this film did that. You wanted to go along with them on this, this journey in this mystery. And again, they were very likable characters. I also found the mystery to be very compelling. The mystery slowly unfolds over the course of the movie, and so there's a little hint given here and there as to what's going on. There's one older guy who gives these hints throughout the film. I think you see him a little bit in the trailer. And so with this, you know, you see it slowly unraveling to the point it really has, about in the middle of the film, this big unveiling as to what's really going on. But even that part of the mystery is just one little piece, and you get the full story at the very end. And the last thing I liked about the film was the music was fire. The score has this black exploitation 70s vibe. So when they would go into like a scary place, it had this old kind of again black exploitation. You can kind of uh, you know hear things like that in like the old Dolomite movies or what have you know what have you. And then the actual songs themselves were pretty cool. So again, a lot of uh, I felt like there's a little bit of hip hop in there, um, but there's all, like, a lot of 70s music. You know, just kind of like, again, it really had try to go for that authentic black exploitation vibe with the score and the songs. So what didn't I like about the film? I found a comedy at best to be here to miss. Now, of course, you have Jamie Foxx, who is one of my top five comedians, but he's delivering the lines that are written for him. And for the most part, it just doesn't work. They also have these random references to Nancy Drew and to... Uh, Carmen San Diego, which I, I get it. You know, you have a pimp, you have a prostitute, and you have a drug dealer saying these things, so you're supposed to laugh. I didn't laugh once. I mean, to me, in those parts, even though I know you have a black director, um, black actors, I feel like it was almost like laughing at black people rather than laughing with us. It made me think about the Chappelle show where it was, it was this one bit where you had this like this pixie, this like um, black face pixie guy, and from what Dave Chappelle said, somebody laughed at it a little bit in the wrong way. Um, and I feel like this film can definitely have that. If you have the wrong audience watching this, they very much could see kind of the stereotypes and, and, the, and the, the negative things and kind of laugh at that and not really get the point of the movie. And that was the other thing I didn't like about the film. I felt like the story was shallow and heavy handed. And so in the film, and I, I don't think I'm giving away too much. We have the white people in the film. They are the bad guys. Like that's, they're the bad guys. Um, I can't think of one white character that was good in the whole film. So they're all the bad guys. And then the black people are not just the good guys, but the victims. And so it's very much this white oppressor, black victim um, dichotomy, which I don't really uh, care for in films. It's one thing is if you like do like a slave film and you see the African-Americans fighting against it. This one, it very much was like the white people are the technologically savvy, the the kind of the, the, the kind of nor quote unquote normal people, um, you know, people you can relate to on some level, like they're just regular folk and the black people, are all these stereotypes. And so we're supposed to support the stereotypes against the, the white oppressors. And again, it just doesn't work for me. Now, there is one black character at the end that's kind of a, a, a you know, is supposed to be the super bright, super smart character. But again, it's still the same kind of the idea that he's working for the, the smart white people. And now the, you know, the, the, the victims, these ghetto people are now fight, finally able to fight back against them. So, should you see the film or just skip it? 
I just skip it. So the film premieres on Netflix on July 21st, so this Friday, and I just don't think it's worth your time. I went, you know, went to the theater and saw it. You know, I wanted to see it um, ahead of when the film comes out to give my review. And again, I, you know, part of me kind of regrets seeing it. <laughs> or, you know, it just wasn't that good of a film. I've seen this film do done better. Um, Bamboozle does a bit better version of this. Also, The Matrix 1 and 2, so not, not the third and fourth one, but the first two Matrices does the same basic thing much, much better. It kind of feels like a mediocre episode of the show Atlanta. So Atlanta has some really good episodes. Um, the goof that stood by the jaw is amazing. Um, the one with the Michael, I can't think of I remember his name, the Michael Jackson uh, wannabe guy <laughs> that this paper down on cover that was good. There's a lot of good ones, of course. My man, the transracial guy, <laughs> is so non PC. But every time I every time I see him, he does YouTube stuff. Every time I see him, I crack up and I think about that. Uh, was it 40, 45 year old white guy? I love that one. And and and, and there's some really good ones. The, the, the season uh, series finale was really good. But the point is, there were some weak ones along the way as well. And so this feels like an extended version of one of those weak ones. So especially in that last in the last season when they started going to the almost like else worlds, like the back and forth between the reality that we see and this other reality. And so this one felt like one of those episodes with kind of this alt this kind of off reality. It just wasn't very funny. And it de and the story that the um the message was so heavy handed that it totally missed the mark. So if you found that review interesting and or informative, please like this video and subscribe to my channel. Also, please share this video. And if there are any other black films you want me to review on this channel, please leave those suggestions in the comment section below. Thank you all for your time and have a wonderful rest of your day.